Hey guys, thank you for joining me. This is going to be my first episode ever on the history of computers. So this is a new series I decided to make, something interesting to me and hopefully interesting to everybody else. Now my first episode is going to be about the US's first commercially available computer known as the UNIVAC, also known as the Universal Automatic Computer. Now I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoy this type of video, let me know. If you have any suggestions on how to improve the series, also let me know that in the comments below. And please subscribe. All right, now the first commercially available computer in the United States was known as the UNIVAC. The UNIVAC was first created by J. Presper Eckert and John Mockley which was sold in 1951 and delivered in 1952 to the Bureau of Census, the U.S. Bureau, Bureau of Census. Now the problem with the U.S. Bureau of Census is there was a large population boom after the war in the 1940s and they needed a faster, quicker way to count the census. Before they were using the cards, the counting card machines, so you'd, they'd put the card in and it would count the census, which was taking an extremely long time, so they needed a faster way to do this. So they purchased this computer from J. Presper Eckert and John Mockley for $159,000. Now this is in 1952. In today's inflation, it's $1,536,000. But the price of the UNIVAC didn't stop there. As time went by and they started producing more, the price of the UNIVAC rose to a price of $1,500,000 in those times. This was towards the end of development. Now, adjusted for inflation, that's about $15 million today towards the end of production. The UNIVAC computers were first made famous by accurately predicting the 1952 election of Eisenhower in a landslide which with only 1% of the votes in. So by accurate, the funny thing about this is when CBS got the results because Eisenhower was the underdog, he was not expected to win. And when CBS got the results saying that Eisenhower was going to win in a landslide, they didn't, they just put it, brushed it under the rug, didn't mention it. And when they realized that the prediction from the UNIVAC was actually coming true, that's when they released the information. So now this machine was a behemoth. As you can see from the um, size of this computer, it took up an entire room. This machine weighing in at 7,700 kilograms or 17,000 pounds and contained about approximately 5,000 vacuum tubes as well as took up about 35 meters squared or 382 feet squared of floor space. So this machine took up an entire room. So some of these units were air-cooled and some of them were water-cooled. The Bureau of Census actually purchased two of them, the first being air-cooled, the second being water-cooled. So everybody that thinks water-cooling computers is a new fad going on for enthusiasts, this has been around since now to put this into perspective, I want to compare the UNIVAC to computers today. Random access memory that we all know today can be read and written in any order. Now the Mercury delay line memory is considered a sequential access memory. Now what does this mean? This means that it has to be um, accessed in a predetermined sequential order. So unlike the random access memory, it can't jump around searching for information and writing information. It has to go in order. And another problem with the mercury delay line memory was the mercury. Now the temperatures had to be strictly monitored on the mercury delay line memory due to the speed at which sound traveling through the mercury is different at different temperatures. Now for the storage on the UNIVAC, it could hold a total of 10 uniservo magnetic tapes. Now these were 1200 foot tape rolls that could store 128 bits of information per inch. Now let's compare this to a hard drive today. Seagate just announced a new hard drive back in December that can hold 16 terabytes of information. Now they also announced by year 2020, they should be releasing a hard drive that can hold 20 terabytes of information. Now that's a lot of information on one hard drive, but now let's compare this to the Uniservo drive. 
This was able to hold 128 bits of information per inch of tape. Now, if you take that 1,200 feet, multiply that into inches, you get a total for an entire 1,200 feet of tape, magnetic tape, you can store 230 kilobytes of information. Now to get an understanding of how small 230 kilobytes of information is, you wouldn't even be able to fit a high, one high quality photo onto that. Now for the CPU in the Univac, this was able to perform 1,905 operations per second, running at a clock speed of 2.25 megahertz. Now this might sound like a lot of operations per second, but now let's compare that to the 9900K I have in my computer right here. Now my 9900K can do 201.22 giga operations per second at a base clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz. Now that is a major difference in speed compared to the two processors and in operations per second. So the Census Bureau, like I said, used two Univac computers and and they were in use till 1963, whereas an insurance company known as the Casualty of Tennessee used their system in the longest until 1970. In all the years, a total of 46 Univac 1 computers had been sold. High co the high costs to operate and advancements in technology made the Univac obsolete. This has been my first episode of the history of computers. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve my series, please let me know in the comments below because I want to make this a very interesting and fun and educational series on my channel. And if, like I said, if you want me to continue making these on different subjects of computer history, let me know. And I will, if you guys are watching it, I enjoy making it. So thank you guys. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you guys have a great day. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Thank you.